Inside Blue. Uh, with us today is Kevin O'Hara. Traveled all the way here from Ireland. Am I correct? We're on Ireland or Scotland? I keep mixing it up. Spain. Sp oh, <laughs> not even close. <laughs> living in Spain. Okay, so I found an Irishman from Ireland who's living in Spain. Living in and Spain. And we got him now, and this is his first time here to the United first States. Time, yeah. um, and he's here to help put some issues about alcohol and how it affects each and every one of us in perspective. And hopefully we'll be able to learn some things, and I'm sure we will. But um, this has always been an issue in law enforcement with um, uh, cops. And there's a little bit of a background, and, and I'm going to go back into 1982. When I was in the police academy, one of the instructors said that this profession has the highest rate of alcoholism, divorce, and suicide. And being 20 years old, I remember sitting there going, what am I doing in this place? You know, I was playing hockey, came out of college, everything was good. And this was the news that I was told. So um, I didn't believe it when it was told to me. And what I've learned over the last 38 years that I'm still here was that tidbit of information was 100% correct. Yeah. Um, I've seen an alcohol affect many, many members in the police uh, community. A divorce, and um, unfortunately, suicide. We're seeing a lot of that. So, um, you know, that being said, I know you have a program, yeah. and maybe you can tell us a little bit more about you and your background and how you come into this program and kind of enlighten all of us. Well, I started out, um, I was a drinker for 30 years. I started out um, drinking when I was, I suppose I had my first drink when I was 13, uh, I didn't really start drinking, you know, properly until maybe 18 years of age. Um, but then, you know, in, in the total, it was just, uh, I was drinking a lot by the time I got to 45, 46 years of age. And it was, um, yeah, it got too much. I mean, I, I, it was actually at Christmas. We, we'd moved to Spain and um, my son was still back in Ireland. My son came over to visit us. Uh, he'd come over a couple of times before. And it was ended up being that he was, you know, as soon as he came over, we were doing the Irish thing of going out and down to the local pub. And we spent the, the, the week just drinking. My son's, uh, he's 20, 28, 29 now. Um, so, and that was, you just thought that Christmas was, this is the way it's going to happen now. Every time I see my son, sure. this is, this is going to be our life. So I thought, I can't do that, you know. So that changed my mind about it. Um, and then... I stopped drinking and I started making a few videos and putting them up on YouTube and I got a few responses and then, you know, making more videos and, you know, it went on from there. So uh, that was Alcohol Mastery. Um, and that was seven seven years ago this Christmas. So um, we, we, we've got a program now, Habits Unplugged, that uh, is sort of a culmination of all that, seven years. So you started doing the videos as yeah. really a way to educate people? It, it was it was an, a way of educating myself first, uh, uh, and we wanted to do. I wanted to do um, sort of um, just do videos to to learn how to do the videos. That was sure. my, my one of my biggest motivations for doing it at the beginning. But then it just because I was putting them on YouTube and I was getting people saying, "Look, I understand exactly where you're coming from." You know, I mean, it's one of the things that I always get people to do when they stop drinking is uh, make a video of yourself in that first week, um, and just talking to yourself, talking to your future self. Uh, this is who I am now uh, and then you can look at this in a year's time or you know in my case seven years time and you see the, the just the difference wow. with that alcohol it's amazing you know wow, so, pretty good idea actually. yeah 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 so from the time that you realize that hey I gotta change this to now you you've obviously helped a lot of people yeah right how many roughly um personally one-on-one -on -one, probably uh couple of hundred one-on-one -on -one people you know right. coaching and stuff but to uh, videos thousands yeah with the videos thousands yeah going back you know you, you have videos that are out there um you helped hundreds one-on-one one-on-one -on -one, yeah and now it's social media you you're on social media yeah so followers twitter facebook pages got what impact do you probably have? about forty thousand on on youtube about twenty thousand on uh, Facebook, we don't do Twitter. Okay. It's, I, I just don't know how to do that, but it's that's a different story. I'll show you. It's a good way to get yeah, yeah. police commissioners. <laughs> um, 
Uh, yeah, but it's, I mean, it, it, I love YouTube. I mean, YouTube is one of those things where, you know, there's the comment section is just, uh, um, I mean, that's motivation for me more than anything else when you, you hear people that are saying. So tell me about some of those comments. Well, he, 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 people, they, they, it starts out with people who are, are sort of saying, look, I really want to do it now, you know. I mean, you get people who are saying, I've tried this over and over again. I'm going to try this. And then um, there's people that have said, you, you've you've motivated me to do it now and to, to stop. And then, you know, the ones that I love are the ones that are six months into it or a year into it. And they're saying, you know, look, man, you know, you've you've been a, a really big help to me, you know. I mean, you know, I, it's it's one of those things where you have to do it yourself, but you need some someone to spark you off, you know. So you're, you're going with videos. Yeah. You're impacting people. But somebody's got to get there first, right? Like yeah. You and I were talking earlier, whether it be a gambling problem, drugs, alcohol, the ultimate switch is the individual, right? Mm. That's the ultimate mm. person, but there's someone who flips that switch to get them there? Yeah. Or is it just one day it you can, wake it, up it and It can be anything, you know? Right. I mean, for me, like I said, it was my son. Right. That was the, the thing. Right. Uh, it's all, I think it's always an internal motivation because you've got the, you've got the emotional reaction to, to something. something outside right. of yourself. Right. And it can be an emotional reaction right. that you're, you know, you've got, but it has to be the person who wants to do it. I mean, I was saying earlier, Ron, it's, you know, you've got, uh, one of my biggest questions is how can I help my dad, my brother, my sister, whatever right. it is, uh, my partner. And it's if they don't want to do it themselves, there's nothing you can do, you know. You know, you can keep the pressure on them. Um, but if they don't want to really stop and uh, go into it, you know, themselves, they, they're not going to do it. Uh, you know? it. It's like somebody going to the gym. Yeah. I want to lose Same weight. Thing. I want to work on something. Yeah. I got to do it myself. Same thing. Um, Public comments. Okay, so here's a couple of public comments. I feel like I'm wearing goggles under the deep sea. <laughs> I think I'm going to give it another go. Thanks for the support system. Love watching these videos. I think they're the only thing that's stopping me from cracking up as my leg is completely screwed up from a fall. I had so many operations seven days ago. Um, so these are the types of one-on-ones that you're getting back yeah. from people. Yeah, I think a lot of it is, I mean, with these videos, I'm out walking and it's a very rural, pastoral, very quiet. So there's no distractions. It's up in the mountains and it's it's showing the opposite side of, I mean, when I was drinking, there was no, I mean, every so often I go out walking. But right. now, you know, when I stopped drinking, actually, it was one of the things that I did two or three hours a day, you know, just to get my head away from thinking about alcohol. Right. You know, that's the, it's an important thing at the beginning that you're you're focusing your mind away from um, what you're missing. You know, you're focusing your mind forwards instead of backwards. So y- what you're doing is changing behavior. Yeah. Right. So your videos, they change behavior, right? We, yeah. we spoke earlier on, kind of applicable to just changing behavior, even if it's toward weight loss, yeah. drugs, gambling, yeah. things along yeah. those lines. So what would you say in these videos that begins that process that that leads people to realize hey i can follow this and obviously there's got to be some encouragement along the way because that after a yeah. couple of days i mean we'll yeah. have that drink so yeah. um what's putting this together for you to, to get that information to teach people this? i nearly always finished every video with don't put the alcohol in your mouth that's the the first i mean without doing that you there's no you can't do anything else you know you can't move forward but once you have that basis you know, that solid foundation of, of uh, giving your, your body the break from, from the alcohol, then your mind, you can think about, you know, what you want to go. But it's always, for me, it's always about focusing uh, on your own future and what you can do, because everyone wants to do something, you know. Uh, and it's, without the, um, without putting the alcohol in, you're opening your mind to, um, you know, for the first 30 days or 60 days, you're coping with life without alcohol. So you're yeah. coping with... Uh, if if you're going out, if, say, if, I mean, for me, it was it was coming home from from work and sitting down on the couch and opening my few tins of beers and stuff, and uh, that was my um, trigger every night. So, um, as I said, I, I used to go out walking, then so it'd be an hour, an hour and a half in the morning, and then in the evening I'd be going out for uh, another hour and a half, you know, and just walking away, and um, you know, it just went to that stage where if you can go. 
uh, five days, ten days, uh, and you know, get to that thirty days or get to the sixty days. Um, it just makes a big difference in your in yourself, you know. See, the motivation was your son, which is probably no greater motivation yeah. than your own child, right? Yeah. So your motivation is, I'm not going to do this. Yeah. I'm going to live this life with my son and teach this to him. And some way you pull yourself back. And you fill that time frame with, instead of me sitting here opening up a can of beer, I'm going to go take a walk. Yeah. And that was the beginning for you. Yeah, it's, it's the culprit. I mean, it's once you get to that, it's if you think about it like... Um, You've got two two types of triggers. You've got these triggers that are coming up regularly. So you've got your day to day. This is what is triggering off your drinking, and then you've got triggers that are um, maybe happen once a year, like the holiday season or your birthday or you know this uh, whatever a wedding anniversary or you know these kind of things don't come up every so often. Uh, but those regular triggers, you can deal with those within thirty days, easy you know, or 45 days, whatever it is, but a short period of time. Right. And that's where you need that coping mechanism. So we always tell people either to, um, you, you move, so you, you get yourself up and you're doing something physically. You're, you're changing your mindset so that you're um, you're thinking about something Seeing else. something or, else, doing something yeah. else, right? And, and, and you're changing your environment as well because if you're sat in the same spot and you're trying to do the same things that you, you always do, those triggers are going to keep right. popping up. You know? Whereas if you get yourself out of there, you know, you, you're, you're forming new triggers. I mean, that's, as I say, in the beginning, that's what it's all about, is coping. So we get movement, change movement, your environment. Changing your environment and changing your mind. You know, and that's, you can do that with... And that kind of happens as you're changing your yeah, environment, yeah, right? But seeing something... If you do all along. three of the things together, then it's right. a powerful combination. Right. I mean, for me, it was audiobooks. I'd stick uh, the earbuds in... Think of something different. And just, you know, and right. always motivational stuff, you know. So you, you're thinking the other th people are putting their thoughts into your mind. Um, you know, and we were talking about uh, the AA and how you know, that with the AA, their, their, their process is that every time you go to the AA, you're, you're brought back to the alcohol again. So if you're 10 years away from it, the first thing you do when you go in through the, the doors is say, I'm Kevin, I'm an alcoholic. You know, so how are you supposed to get away from that, that thinking about alcohol, you know? Whereas for me, you know, I think 30 days, 60 days, then you start to really push and push and push away from um, the alcohol and towards the things that you want to do, you know. And, it, you know, it takes a, it's not a magic It's not easy, it. but, you know, no. you just brought up a point that I talk about with, um, you know, NYPD is having a lot of issues with suicide. Mm. And you, you, you just hit something that you go to AA and, hi, I'm Ed and I'm an alcoholic. You're reiterating that all the time. Yeah. So that's the negative. That's the negative. Okay. Yeah. So you look at this suicide hotline, so to speak, yeah. right? One eight hundred suicide or whatever number it is, or don't kill yourself. Yeah. You know, it occurred we had someone, and it, and it goes to I'm Terrence and I'm awesome. So you're changing the dialogue. Yeah. And right. I think that that probably has a big impact. It does. I mean, th there's um, um, there's the control thing as well. I mean, you you have to, to go there and you have to say, I don't control this anymore. You know, somebody else does, or I have to give up my control to... Do you believe that? No. no. I mean, uh, well, if, if um, everybody that stops drinking has to do it, you know, whether you're going to, and you're paying 50 grand to go to a, a private rehab facility, or you're going to the AA, or wherever you're going, you've got to physically not put the alcohol into your mouth. You know, and you've got to do that day after day after day. Um, so, so you're, you're in, control. in control of that. Right. Nobody else is. I mean, nobody right. can force you not to do it. You know, so right. that's the the thing is, AA says that you're you're powerless over yourself, but you're not because you have to you have to have at least that uh, power. Uh, you know, and I always say that you've got a meter of power, and that's your arm. You know, that that's where you you're bringing the. So, but when they say you're powerless. Um, I kind of get what they're saying, but I think yeah. you're kind of taking it in a different direction. Yeah. Because ultimately, you have the control. You have right? the control. Because even if I'm yeah. in AA, yeah. you know, a lot of people are in AA and yeah. they go six months and they're back drinking again. So yeah. the idea is that you have the control over that. And if if a person has the control over that, then they just need the coaching probably exactly, to yeah. continue yeah. through. Yeah. So... 40,000 followers, Facebook, all the stuff going on. Seven years you're doing this. Seven years. 
tell me some of the stories, if you don't mind, of, of no. people that were success stories that people are still maybe seven years later aren't drinking. One of my favorite stories of is uh, of a, an ex, uh, he's actually a currently serving Marine. I thought he was an ex-Marine, but he's not. And uh, he sent me a video from um, a beach somewhere in on the West Coast. Oh, I'm sorry, the East Coast of the, the States. And uh, he, it was a windy day. And he said, uh, brother, he calls me, he says, uh, I've, uh, I've just got to my year. He said, I want to show you something, you know. And he had a backpack and he pulled out the backpack. And on the back of this backpack was a big Superman sign. And he said, you taught me that, what my kryptonite is. And he says, and I've never had that. Oh. So, and every so often I get a, a, an email off him, you know, and, uh, you know, it just makes my day. He's still going, he's still going. And, yeah. you know, he's talking about what he's going to do after he gets out of the Marines. And so, yeah. That's Probably, a good impact. Yeah. I mean, that, that's one of my best, you know, it's just. But just so both of us don't get killed on that, you yeah. can't say ex-Marine because they will correct you right yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah, only yeah. former <laughs> Marines. And I know we're talking about United States yeah. Marines because yeah. there are no Marines other than the yeah. United States Marines. Yeah, so okay. For everyone listening, that's a fact. Sorry, okay? guys. <laughs> I, I, I can make sure I don't need them yeah, yeah, to yeah, storm yeah, in a yeah, building yeah. house. Well, I'm, I'm going to fly out in mm -hmm. a couple of days. So yeah, I'm well, give me your address. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... Where are you going from here as far as what you've done, the yeah. people you've impacted? Um, what message do you give and what would you like to see happen as you go forward? I'd like to see something. Um, I mean, my, my, my thing would be um, to help more young people not even get into the habit in the first place because I think it's, you know, it's for me it's a, it's a massive gateway drug. You know, they talk about other drugs being gateway drugs, point. but this is it's something that, you know, you, you, you're born into it, you know, and I'm not saying you're born into drinking, but you you, you have the, um, you wet in the baby's head sort of thing with alcohol. And all right. throughout your, your years, it's it's something which is weaved and uh, woven into your into your lifestyle, even if it's not. It's socially it, accepted. Yeah. You know, even if it's not in your own home, right. you see it everywhere, you know, and it's right. you see it on TV programs, on movies, in billboards, it's in the supermarkets, and you can't avoid it. But, um I'd like to see more. That I think, fortunately, there's a lot less kids that are taking it up, but because they're doing other things, you know, they're getting addicted to right. video games. But it's the same sort of principles, you know. Um, so I would like to see less kids do, doing that. That's my personal perspective. It, it's kind of um, funny, that, you know. You say it's socially accepted, but I have a friend who was huge person in the alcohol industry and yeah. he made a statement years ago and he said that in good times and in bad yeah. that industry survives he said stock market crashes yeah. people yeah. drink happy times people drink yeah. so that's how socially accepted it is. Yeah. It, it's okay but it yeah. leads to all of these issues but it's the same i mean you know that that was the thing i drank when it was raining i drank when it was sunny right. i drank when i was sad right. and happy you know there's all different you know and it, for me, and I think for a lot of people, your life just becomes more and more involved uh, with alcohol. More and more of your, your of your life starts to revolve yeah. around it, you know, like a black hole, uh, sucking everything in, and it's just... Because it becomes more and more accepted. It's yeah. like, it's, hey, what's the big deal? It personally, yeah, right. and, you know, like, right. uh, I mean, when I was growing up, um, uh, you know, we, we, we could go up to uh, somebody walking in, we couldn't buy it ourselves, but you go up to somebody and they'd have no problem. Sure. Going into uh, as twelve year olds, you know. So, what kind of programs would you like to start, or think that should be implemented if you were able to do them, or maybe you are doing them? What programs are you trying to do, especially to affect young people? Yeah, I mean, with with young people, I think more in terms of education in the schools, and you know, I think that has to start there. You know, it has to start. You know, I, I always say with with some of my clients. I mean, if I wish the ones that have kids now, you know, they've got young kids. I wish I could have done that. I, I thought about doing that when I was, you know, I can't do it. You can't go back. Yeah. But um, I think if, if you can educate the parents to understand that, you know, this is not, it's not a harmless drug. There's three and a half million people every year throughout the world die from, from alcohol causes, you know, and they're the ones that are, it's on the, the um, you know, they're known to, to have died from that. You know? Right. So, and it leads to other things, right? It leads to it leads suicide to and yeah. DWI, car accidents yeah. and yeah. fatalities, the things whole, along those lines. I mean, the whole. 
in the world of law enforcement, we yeah. spoke earlier that you know, and, and probably in a lot of other professions too, yeah. the shift work and you know, you finish at midnight and yeah. where do you go? It's the end of the night and most people are home in yeah, bed. Right. So you end up, you go to the bar with your buddies, you mm. socialize, you're watching whatever's up on the screen and you just keep talking and hanging out. And that becomes that pattern that develops over a period of time, especially if you're not aware of it because yeah. it becomes normal, yeah. right? Yeah. So for police that are in that world, what would you do? What would you say differently? Or is there anything to do? So we, we got, we want to get you up moving and thinking. Um, I think it's to, to, to understand that the problems are not, you know, the, the, I mean, the alcohol is a problem in and of itself, but there's also, you know, there's underlying things that are going on and, you know, people are using alcohol as a, as a crutch or as a coping mechanism. So there, there's a lot of that underlying stuff that has to be dealt with as well before, you know, um, I think the alcohol is, you know, as you say, it's, it's a poison to the body, it's a toxin, but, uh, you know, if, if, you're, if you've got no other way of releasing, you know, what are you going to do? So that that's the big thing is to find alternative... Find another yeah. motive, another... Yeah. Another coping right. mechanism. As I say, you know, I think it's just at the beginning, just until they've got... Um, I mean, it's like if, if you take an onion and you start peeling back the layers of the onion, you're going to find, uh, you know, you, the alcohol is the, the main thing, so you, you, you get rid of that. And then after that, you've got your problems underneath and you're dealing with them one one at a time you know yeah. so i mean it's you know it, it it is that it's getting rid of the it's going through the coping mechanism so you have to instead of using alcohol as a coping mechanism you have to find something else to get you through that initial phase and then once you do that then you're you're dealing with the underlying uh the underlying problem do you see from all of the experiences you've had with the various people any particular mechanism that people almost replace it with they go is it just we all go out for a walk do we go to the gym do yeah. we just start cooking uh, do you see any common denominator if you know i think it's as we were saying earlier on it's if you can if you can move do something not just move but do something that is you know you're you're um you're getting a bit of joy out of you know and i know at the beginning it's 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 difficult to sort of uh to move away from the alcohol because you're you're thinking about it um but for me, it was walking. Uh, there's exercise and it's going down to the gym. There's, you know, whatever. I mean, you're living in New York here. There's, there must be... Not much happening here. No, no. no. I know it's your first time, so, but yeah, it's only yeah. 8 million people. The yeah. city never sleeps, so I'm trying to figure out what I should do next. There must know. be uh, everything under the sun, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, you've got your spoil for choice yeah. of activities to do. I mean, and um, uh, I think talking is, a, is another one, either to yourself or to preferably to right. somebody else. But it's getting out into the open as well, you know. And I think if um, a lot of people, what they do when they stop drinking is they focus their minds on the alcohol itself instead of um, what else is happening around them. So uh, for me, um, it was alcohol. I was uh, 50 pounds overweight. Um, I had, uh, I thought it was a, being a bad dad. So there was all these little issues that were, were happening. Uh, at, but most people focus on the alcohol. So then mm. everyone else then is saying, uh, oh, well, you, you must be an alcoholic, you know. But if you don't focus on the alcohol, if you say, look, I'm stopping smoking and, and drinking and I'm going to cut down on this food and stuff, it's, you know, it takes away the, the pressure. You know, the, the, the least amount of pressure that you can put on yourself, the better. So it's really, it, it, what we're talking about is mindset change. Yeah, yeah. And the idea of getting up to a walk creates another something to do yeah. to take you away from yeah. that thought of happening well it is i mean it's it, you know if, if you if you're stopping smoking right you've got this um you've got a a feeling where you you know your triggers are going all throughout the day most people who stop drinking they don't have the triggers they have it in the evening and there's a certain time that they stop working that's when they start to trigger off the alcohol so that's when they have to focus their minds on right. you know so if you're going to the gym in the morning um you switch it to the evening instead do you know what I mean? Right. So you're focusing your yeah. mind just around that something one else in it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And if you do that, don't start drinking in the morning. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll, yeah. <laughs> don't start drinking in the morning. Right. Yeah. So, but it, most people won't do that. You know? No. So, no. and it's, it, it's once you get in, it, it makes sense to yeah. replace that time, that yeah. that happy hour time, yeah. with something else. And generally, you don't, you know, like if it, if you go to the gym once you're once you're there and you're out the door. 
then the other thoughts, most of the time you're going to be, you know, that's that done for the day. So you, your triggers are not going to come back when you've when you've come back from the gym. Yeah, you know, time off time, time is walk. different. Yeah. It's, it's later at night. Yeah, yeah. Your, your mind is different right. as well. You know, you've got some endorphins going right. on. You know, you've plenty of oxygen going through your body and your mind has changed. So there's, there's all these yeah. little sequences. And you, re, you, re, you remove your routine. Yeah. You, that, yeah. That's been broken. That's, that's it. Point. And that's what it's all about is trigger routine. behavior and the reward. Uh, you know, you, you, your your trigger is is what sparks it off. The behavior is the drinking itself, and the reward is the perception at the end of it what you're getting. Huh. And for a lot of people, it's forgetting about stuff, it's um, relaxation, it's stress relief, or whatever they're using it for. But you know, they're not really. There's a lot better stuff out there to do to to maybe not to forget, you know, but to um, to relax and to how big of a role. Stress. Uh, and I know it plays a role, but how yeah. big of a role does alcohol play in relation to people who commit suicide? I'd say, I'd say between thirty-five, fifty percent of suicides would be there would be alcohol involved. That's pretty high. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'd say that's. I mean, it, it's easier, isn't it? You're you're sort of. Um, they say alcohol removes inhibitions or it lowers your inhibitions but it lowers your inhibitions for stuff that you shouldn't you know your inhibitions are up there for a reason you know i mean how much crap do people talk when they've had a load of drink you know right. and it's the same thing with you know like well you get all kinds of variations of people to drink the funny guy the yeah. fighter the, yeah. the storyteller yeah. i mean it, this sort of guy just sits in a corner and sleeps yeah. um there's probably a bunch more too that we left out. No, I think so. Yeah, but it, it's it's one of those things. I think it makes it easier to think about things um, that maybe you don't want to think about. Makes it easier for you to do things that you don't want, you wouldn't normally want to do. You know, and to make um, sort of instant uh, decisions. You know, so the kids in school, college kids, high school kid going into college next year becomes party time. Yeah. In almost every university, he's got party time someplace. Yeah. They have the no drinking policies, but I think we both know that the yeah. kids there are going to do yeah. it. Um, what would you tell them? Well, I mean, there's there's a big problem with. I mean, again, it's the culture, isn't it? You know, you've. You, I think once you get kids in college, it's late, too late, you know, to right. to start. I mean, if they're not listening to the to the uh, education that they get into the, in the schools, so it, it is a responsibility in a large part, not only to the for the, the the earlier educators, but for the parents as well. I mean, they they say that a lot of your um, your life choices and the way you think about life are set Formed in stone. Early on. Yeah, right. by by the time you're three or four years of age, you know. So, right. so you want to get them when they're young. Yeah, really it, you know, it really is. It's important to get. It's an interesting point, too. You know, we was talking about marijuana as the gateway drug, yeah. but in some ways, alcohol is also yeah, the gateway absolutely. drug. Absolutely. Right? You know, and it's uh, cigarettes were, I mean, look yeah. at the way cigarettes were portrayed right. 10 years ago. Right. You know, and now it's completely different but because the culture has changed, you know, and you're not allowed to, to smoke in certain places now, you know. And, uh, and it's a What made a difference thing. there, and it almost has to do the same thing, I guess, with alcohol yeah. or other things, is like cigarette, you know, smoking. You know, you started to see pictures of black lungs and, yeah. you know, people dying and not being able to breathe. And so that created a visual effect for people to change behavior. Yeah. And you almost need that in a way with alcohol. But I do. It's a big problem because, yeah. you know... You can't really get that same effect. Well, if you've got, you know, you see um, uh, where I'm living in Spain and in, in Ireland, they've got just horrific pictures on their back of cigarette packs. But if you do that on... on uh, alcohol, you have to put it on the cheap can of beer, right. but you've also got to put it on the sh- the bottle of champagne right. and the uh, the bottle of alcohol that's been sold for a couple of thousand dollars. You know, yeah. and that's where your problems start. You know, so and it's, there's a lot of pushback from the alcohol industry. They're a big lobbying group, yeah. a lot of money. Yeah. Right? It's a global business, yeah. so it's not something that's just going to go away. No, it's know? not. And it, you know, it, it is that normalization of things. It's um, you know, kids. You've also got this thing where um, you, you've got alcohol is treated as one uh, entity in, in a house. And so you, you're teaching the kids about heroin and coke and all these other drugs. But alcohol but is, a, is yeah, accepted. It's acceptable. It's accepted. You know, so it's, yeah. you're setting up your kids for this real interior conflict that they've got, you know. So they just think it's, it's a normal part of everyday life. It, it, 
it's a, it's a hidden secret when you yeah. think about it. It's it's accepted. Yeah. Because it's socially accepted. Yeah. And it's not illegal. Yeah. And kids do it. And it's only when you you, you actually stop and you go right. I'm, I'm that's it. I'm not having it anymore. Right. That's when you're considered to have a problem with alcohol. Then you know. Right. People will turn around and say, oh. I remember sitting there with people in, in uh, and say, do you want a glass of wine? I say, no. Oh, why? You know, you, yeah. you, what's wrong with you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry for you, you know, that kind of thing, you know, whereas, you know, it, it's when yeah, you because stop, you're outside the norm. Yeah. You're outside when the norm, you, so you, you must have a problem. When you're outside, yeah. you're looking in, then you start to see, right. you know, the, the, not the addiction, but the dependence, you know. I mean, I don't really like that. I mean, there's a lot of people who are addicted or at that high level, people who are getting up in the morning, they're drinking. But, you know, normal people who are... But it starts... Yeah. It starts at the very lowest level that leads to the highest yeah. level. And you see people and, they, you know, they, they'll they have... Uh, they won't go out without a, um, a glass of wine with their dinner, for instance. Uh, and that's a form of dependence, you know. Uh-huh. So, you know, but it's, it's just one of those things. It, Today you see kids going out, they're going to go to a club or go to a yeah. bar, and they'll go to someone's house, and they'll have drinks there before they go out, yeah. because it's costly when they go out. And I'm like, who does warm-up drinks? Yeah. But that's what people do, yeah. and they do it because it's now accepted. It's the culture. It's right. grown into that kind right. of a culture, isn't it? So we really got to just right. work toward a culture change. And I know that in this country they're making more of a move toward fitness they're trying anyway it's kind of slow moving but they're trying to get people more aware about being in shape and fitness and um i I remember from the days of coaching hockey they talked the training that uh, i think it takes three days to get alcohol out of your system before you can get back into absolutely into a training mode so um you know people kind of need to know that you can be out all night drinking tonight but tomorrow is going to impact the way you go to work and then, you know, that the, they don't really know how long alcohol stays in your brain, you know. It's one of oh, the few yeah, things yeah. that can pass. It passes directly through the blood-brain barrier, you know, and gets straight into your brain. And, you know, even when it can't be detected, let's say with a blood test, you know, what, what's the long-term effect on your, uh, on all your neurons and, right. you know, everything that's yeah. working yeah, upstairs, know you don't yeah. know. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, it's an accumulative effect that, that just keeps piling up and piling up over the years you know and it just affects your life in so many different ways so and it's really only when you stop i mean when you see people and they've stopped for a month you know they're just getting past that sleeplessness stage and you know they're they're starting getting used to to life you know maybe they've you know they're not thinking about it so much but when you see them six months after there's a big year after and they you know especially when they're focusing away and they're not looking backwards and they're, they're not um uh the fear of missing out that kind of thing you know right. what am i missing out on they've changed they've, the whole they've changed the routine yeah they have something, something else to do but they've changed their 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 the way they look at alcohol right. they used to look at it as something that yeah, was acceptable point. to right. themselves but now right. they're they're looking at it like what it is it's you know it's um uh it's rotting grape juice or it's you know fermentation process is right. is uh you know when you look at it it's not a nice thing i mean it's your yeast yeah. is eating <laughs> the the the, the sugars and it's pooping out the the other the, the alcohol yeah. you know you break so, it all down yeah. like, what am I drinking it is for? you know right, right. Uh, you know when when you look at the, the the drunkenness you know and you get a buzz I mean what's what's actually going on in your body well, you that's know? what I never understood is what's the benefit of yeah. drinking all night to wake up tomorrow and not be able to function yeah I, I just never understood yeah. that you know? uh, my partner Esther she she um, she's just stopped well she never had a big problem with alcohol she. Um, I mean, I've been with her now for, uh, I think it's 10 years. Yeah, we'll, we'll say it, around that, you know. It's been such a joy to you just yeah, keep track of time. Yeah, it's been such a real joy. Trying to help you out. Yeah, yeah. sorry, yeah. <laughs> 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 and, uh, but she's, in, in all the time that I've known her, she, I've seen her drunk once. Um, but she's the same, she doesn't understand, but she still gets that from that perspective that it's, you know, she feels better now that she hasn't right. been drinking, you know. And people do. They yeah. just don't realize that that's They just the don't realize it. Because, I mean, you're, you know, if, if you're doing something consistently, yeah. you, you get into that state where you don't know what's outside of that then. You know, your whole life starts to, as I say, revolve well, it around. It becomes a routine. You, you fall into it, and it's accepted, yeah. and it's normal, and yeah. that's what people do. Yeah. There's bars everywhere, yeah. you know. So the, the, the money aspects of things, you don't notice. The money, that's, you know, you really notice that. That's one of the first things that people notice, that they're, they're saving money. Saving you know? money, yeah. uh, But, I mean, for me, it was... 
it was not only the money that you're you're spending; it's the money on that you're spending on the crap that you're buying when you're drunk. Right. Uh, you know, the food and you're putting on the right. the weight. Yeah, the but impact of health. Yeah, the, the opportunity cost. You know, you, right. there's massive opportunity costs that you because you, you your brain has gotten to that stage where, um, you know, four or five days later, you're still going through the. You know, and most drinkers don't go to that stage. They they it's maybe a day, two days, and then they top themselves up. You know. So they never get to that stage of four right. or five days without it. But, you know, the opportunity cost for me, it was only when I stopped that I started to really improve. Pay attention. Everything, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and you see what's, you see what, what um, the opportunities start to come towards you, but you, you notice them more, you know? You get what I mean? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, because so, it, you're able to notice them. Yeah, you're able to notice them. You, you see the difference by yeah. not being clouded into yeah. the world that you were in. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's what I mean. It's, it's like having a... Uh, a fog over your brain you know like a blanket over your mind all those years and all of a sudden you've you've lifted it off and it doesn't like you say it takes a while before you get to that stage where you're like what's this you know in some ways this almost sounds easy yeah do, right change your thinking get up yeah move but it's not that easy for the person that's in it even no. for the person that wants to change no it's not they have that desire for the alcohol yeah so that's a pretty rough struggle for a person the the this it's simple and that's that's what i always say it's you know to to not drink is you do one thing you don't, don't put drink. the alcohol right. in it right. that's it, that's a simple thing right. you know you know when you're it's the same with smoking you just don't put don't the do cigarette it. in with eating it's a different sort of a thing you know you've got there's a lot of different um aspects to what you're going to eat what you're not going to eat you know what times you're going to eat, how much you're going to eat. So there's a lot more. It's a lot more complicated. But with alcohol, it's you know it's it's a simple yeah. sort of a thing. You know, but um, from police, you know, cops they, yeah. they use alcohol to decompress. Yeah. In some ways, but I, I think it gets hidden behind the social aspect of it. Like we're done work. Yeah. Let's go to bar. What are you going to do? Let's have a drink. I'm going to sit in traffic or. You know, what am I going home for? Everybody's asleep, yeah. that type of thing. And even if people do the midnights, you know, you, you, you're finishing at midnight, 8 a.m. And I remember days where you go to the bar at 8 a.m., 8.30 yeah. in the morning. Yeah. And that becomes a different routine, a different method. And in some ways, they decompress that way. I have two beers before I hit the road, yeah. that type of thing. Yeah. And I guess the big push is you got to get them to realize to do something different yeah and for the person who is kind of struggling with i keep thinking about having that drink um it's going to be a lot harder yeah to get that yeah i think so i mean it's but it's it's the association with the decompressing and the socialization sure. with the alcohol right you know that's the, once you take the alcohol out the people notice the the, the difference because they're missing something mm. It's not that's true. Not the reason for it. Hung out with your friends in a bar and didn't have a drink. Yeah, it feels different. Yeah, but if you do that for a month, it becomes routine, uh, and you're not drinking, it becomes right. routine. Then right. so yeah, you're not right. You know, um, so it, but people associate them with the alcohol and they say, well, yeah. So alcohol is that thing that is because it's missing and it's because it's right. causing me this discomfort. Right. That must be the thing that is helping me to relax or to or is it them or, just socializing and yeah. not drinking alcohol yeah. i mean you you were talking earlier on about um the the uh speaking and getting unloading yourself you know you're you're talking about your problems with your mates and right yeah right. that's a huge thing you know you, i think everyone needs that but it doesn't have to be with with alcohol i think you know with alcohol what you, a lot of the time you're 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 drinking to forget stuff and to push things down and you know when you're pushing things down it's they're not going anywhere yeah. They're just building up. It's like having a coiled spring, you know. That's just getting tighter, tighter and tighter, you know. You, you know. And then they get the release. Yeah. Right. And how you know how how are people going to release things? I mean, it's you know, uh, I think drinkers are can be a lot more aggressive, you know, and that aggression comes out in not only to themselves, you know, to other people. Yeah. Well, it reaches to other yeah. people. It's, if you want to leave, it's where are you going? Yeah. Have one more. But it's not just physical, uh, you know. It's it's the the mental. You know, you've got this mm. mental pressure just building up inside yourself right. all the time. I mean, that, it was something that I only I didn't realize until again I stopped. You know, and you know, you get yourself some distance from the behavior. You can look clearly and at you the realize, right. What was I doing? You know, right. you know, and it's it's only when you get to that stage I think then that 
things start to click over inside in your mind and you start to say, oh, you know, that's the, it was the alcohol all along, you know. It does take time, as I say, and it's not, everyone's not going to go through the same. No, it's steps, different time frames yeah, and different, different struggles. Time frames, yeah. Right. So, and it all depends on the person as well, what, as you say, what struggles they're going through. But, right, that um, underlying issue. Yeah, right. the underlying issues. Tell us about the programs that you offer. Yeah. You have a book. Tell everyone listening about your website, um, you know, all the information so that they can follow you. And if anyone wants help, uh, obviously they could reach out to us, but reaching out to you is yeah. where it really yeah. should be happening. Yeah. So we've got uh, alcoholmastery.com is the, is the main website that we, um, Alcohol Mastery TV is on YouTube. We've got a U, uh, uh, Facebook page as well. Um, you can get a free book at alcoholmastery.com. Um, and that's just a, it's 12 sort of steps to, um, it's an unfortunate name with the steps of uh, AA, but you know, that's the way it panned out. Um, and it's just leading you through those first few days. Uh, and then we've got Habits Unplugged, which is our main program. And that's takes you through a preparation stage of 14 days. And there's a, a transition, which is, it takes you through the first 30 days. And, um, and then the transformation, which takes you to that year. I mean, that year for me was just... Uh, Grand Slam. Yeah, it was yeah. just... Uh, it came at Christmas time for me, and it, it was, you know, coming at this time of the year, and it, I was... I'd done the full year, and I was so nervous getting to that. Uh, you know, I wanted to get to that fr- first full year. Right. Um, and uh, it was it was great. It was the first Christmas. And we were sat around... My, my uh, I was with my sister, and uh, we all sat down, and I come from a big family, you know, there's... Uh, Irish, yeah. a lot of big families. Mm-hmm. Five, five boys and four girls, and so ah, that's not big. My yeah. father had fourteen oh. in his family. <laughs> so, uh, the, 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 my sister turned around. And she says, "Out of all of us, if, if somebody would have said at the beginning of the year that you wouldn't be smoking, you wouldn't be drinking, and uh, you'd also change your diet so much, uh, it wouldn't have been you. You know, it would have been the other ones." And that was, you know, that's six years ago, and I remember that. But got to that first year, and it was such a. a a real big, you know, it's a, I think it's a motivation in itself once you get past that thing. Sure, you get past that. So, yeah. so that's what we're trying to get people past is that first year. In the first, in the preparation stage, you get two videos a day. So there's there's one video in the morning, one video in the evening. It's just to get people, you know, get it constantly in their mind of, you know, helping them to cope with that. You know, it's helping them to get to that stage where they're going to stop and they've got their, their, uh, their mind in the right frame, you know, in order to say, I can do this, you know. Uh, and then the next 30 days, they get a, another video in the morning, video in the evening. And it's all the coping skills that they need to to help them to sleep, to get over the cravings, to, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, and then there's a video a day then for the rest of the year. Uh, and as I said, it's that first year, I think, is the most important um, milestone. You know, 30 days is a great one, you know. I sure. Think, you know, you, well, get you have several days. along the way, yeah. but uh, a year is a, a, year is a the, good number. Yeah. So, so your motivation to change drink and everything was based on hanging out with your son and yeah. having a drink. Yeah. What do you do now? Um, we, uh, I spend more time going across to him. So, I mean, whereas before he was coming across here and uh, uh, over to Spain, I should say. Right. Uh, and uh, now I go over there three or four or five times a year. He comes over to me as well. But we go out walking. We do, you know, we sit down and talk, right. which we didn't do before, you know. Sure. We'd, uh, we'd drink and we'd just act the idiot, you know. That's what we used to do. So so it had an impact on him yeah. also. Yeah, right. and it's had an impact on him. He's uh, uh, he's had a daughter now. He's you know he's, he's really doing well, you know, so I'm really proud of him. And that makes you feel great. Yeah, and it's, it is one of those, it's the alcohol, it, it becomes a, um, a self-perpetuating thing in sure. your life, but so does the, the, when you stop and you start to reap the benefits of that that becomes, you know, you get, as I said, it, more it, opportunities. It sounds so simple, yeah. so common sense. And yeah. in a way it is. It's it just is. having the discipline to it is, complete it, it. But it's, it, it's, it's having that little bit of knowledge to take you right. to the next step, you know, right. and then the next step. And, you know, right. it's, it's taking... encouragement. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's one thing from the A, which is uh, uh, you, you take, you know what's in your control and what's not in your control. Uh, and you take, it's a step-by-step process. So you, you do day one. Then you go to day two and you don't put the alcohol in and you think every day about what you can, you know, that's what the program is about, is trying to get you to change your frame of mind, not right. only about 
the alcohol, but about so many different aspects of your life that have led you into that drinking in the first place, you know, or to that to that stage where your your alcohol has become such a core part of who you are, you know, and to sort of pull that apart bit by bit by bit, you know. Like I say, everyone's different, but it, there's there's something in there for everyone. So, so I'm gonna let you wrap it up. Yeah. With your closing line, so that everyone remembers it. Yeah. It's all yours. So, uh, take care of yourselves, and uh, I'll speak to you again soon. Uh, keep the alcohol out of your mouth, onwards and upwards. Take care. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Edson.